How's it going, YouTube? Polish Piper here. Let me get my lighter out. Specifically, how's everybody on the East Coast of the States? Up by me, we had a real shitty snowstorm. I was working today during the snowstorm, and it wasn't fun. First part of my day was alright. Then we get a call to take a patient with a internal bleeding in the head. Take it from a hospital in Northwest New Jersey. So we take this guy with the head bleed from the hospital for transfer to a hospital in New York City. A man. Well, the reason he was going to New York City is because they couldn't find available beds in closer area hospitals in New Jersey. So, they found a bed in New York City. But I tell you, it was a pain in the ass. Because there's snow, slush, rain, asshole drivers out on the road. And I've got a critical patient in the back that I've got to worry about. And two other people. My EMT partner and my nurse partner. And people, there are cars and ditches everywhere all over the road. I see this all the time. I can say what I want because I've been doing this for 10 years and I see the worst of drivers. It was mainly young, stupid kids driving like assholes who feel they, they're so macho they can drive 60 miles an hour in the left lane with snow, slush, and rain. And they end up in a ditch. And their car's all messed up. And there are some very inconsiderate asshole drivers too. That don't yield to ambulances. And I was driving with my lights and sirens are gone. I'll be behind somebody in the left lane for for miles, blaring my horn, going on the PA, and telling them to get the hell out of my way. But they don't. So instead of a 35 minute trip into, no, I'm sorry, about 35, 45 minute trip into the city, it's way longer than that. Almost close to two hours. And there are people that give me the finger, or they yell at me, or do expressions like, screw you, and all that stuff. I mean, I'm doing my freaking job, so get out of my way. But I don't care, so. If I piss you off, and I'm driving lights and sirens behind you, Oh boy. I'm back home now. Tomorrow's my. Today was my Friday. Hmm. 
yeah avoided many close call accidents today because of jerk off drivers can't stand that shit sometimes I wish I had a turret gun on the front end of my ambulance and like rubber bullets so I can just shoot them at vehicles but no we can't have that oh and another thing about these drivers on the road they are either too cautious to um what's that word Hend it was Hindu's pet peeve in um Smokey Joe Tennessee's contest what's that word for him safety drive safe drivers overly overly safety I mean those are the ones that cause the accidents too Overly safe, the overly safe people. People BMWs, Mercedes, and Lexuses, because they feel you know they can they can handle it. Stupid dumbass kids. They also think they can handle it. <sighs> yep. Smoking my, smoking some Frog Morton on the town in my Nearup. One of my first pipes. I'm outside of my patio now. Let me see if I can show you guys what uh, my property looks like. Well, not, I can't say it's my property. Hold on. How do I turn this shit? Ah, there we go. It's basically what it looks like. Let me get back to my original recording spot. Whoops. Okay. So today, at the end of my day, I'm getting ready, I'm, I'm swiped out already, turning in my keys. Well, actually, I actually didn't turn in my keys, I brought the ambulance keys home with me. But it's okay, I'll drop them off tomorrow morning on my way out. And so, the director, of my company, the head honcho. I fear this guy. Why, you might ask? For all you people out there in the community who, who don't fear people, I only fear three people. Number one being God, because he's my maker. He can do with me whatever he pleases. Number two, is my father. And number three is my boss. God can take my life. My dad can beat my ass. And my boss can take my job. I don't want any of those taking it from me. But anyways, let me get to the point of this. So I'm about ready to leave. It's almost 7.30. And I'm supposed to get out at 7. Can I see somebody? And um, I see my director there. He's trying to put a connect a uh, snowplow onto the front of a, a truck in the garage. And he finally asks for a hand. So I go help him out. Even though I've never connected a plow to a truck before. But whatever. He's the director. I'm not going to say no to him. But anyways. He. I was helping him out. We finally got the plow hooked up to the truck. And um. 
he was having trouble. It's an old, it's a, it's a different plow that he's using with an older truck. He's never used that kind of setup before, so he was having trouble getting one of the jacks. I guess that supports the, um, what's it called, the plow when you're plowing. That seemed to be stuck, and he was lifting it, and some guy was in the truck moving forward and back, maybe somehow loosen it up. So that guy leaves because he was just getting on at night and he had a call to get to. So that guy leaves and I'm stuck with the director. I'm like, oh man, this feels awkward. I never talked to my director. I don't think I've ever spoken to him personally, except for this time. So it felt weird. And some of the other guys, Oh no. So my director goes in to get one of those, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, far, I think it's called a farm lift. Hindu, if you watch this, it's the lift that are always on Jeep Wranglers. I think it's called a farm lift. Um, I have a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon that I don't even know. But, anyways, he gets it. He comes back. Before he comes back, one of my other co-workers that's getting off one of the that's getting off his truck and about to go home. He had about 30 minutes left in the shift. And I he comes over because he was curious and I said, Yeah, we're trying to get that that thing to loosen or else he can't plow. So he goes in, he looks around, I walk I go up to where my director is, walk back with him. That means I need another sip. And my director. This is where I almost shit myself with what just happened at the moment. So my director comes back and he's holding that lift on his right shoulder. And he's standing by where the plow blade is. And the plow blade is lifted up off the ground a little bit. And that guy, my other co-worker, is in the truck. And he hits the switch and the and the plow blade. Yeah, sorry, it's a little cold out. The plow blade drops boom on the ground. Right next to my director's feet. And my director just does one of these looks at my co-worker. Chief, you know, my feet were at the plow blade. Cannot just drop. Uh, I, I cannot mimic that face because thank God it wasn't me. Because that, that, that made me touch cloth. But uh, it was funny because <laughs> that, because I wasn't in that situation. also scary because I've never talked to the director and the first time I really kind of get to know him he's very pissed so we finally get the the plow um, whatever blade hooked up and it's functioning it was a jack that was in the middle that supports we got that loosened and he turns to me and the other co-workers like you guys know how to plow I'm like, no, I mean, I'm not good with this machinery. I don't want to hurt, I don't want to damage any property. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm Pollock, da, 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 da. That's what everybody else would say. But, he's like, okay, no problem. You'll learn tonight. I'm like, um... 7.30, I gotta go home. He's like, don't worry, I'll teach you guys. I didn't tell him that I'm leaving you. He's like, you guys don't don't got anywhere to go, right? Well, I'm not gonna say, I can't say no to my director. So it would have been clever to be like, you know what, I will stay here with you. Because then I could get brown nose up to my director and get to know him. 
after what just happened, after his feet almost got severed off, I'm not hanging out with my director and getting him and getting to know him that way. I barely see this director around. Only when like shit hits the fan at work or something, if something happens, or there's some big corporate thing. The last time I saw him was in February of this year when Buddy Velasco, the cake boss, came to one of the hospitals and did a helicopter cake for us. That's the last time I saw him. He saw me. He knew that I worked for him. But, yet wouldn't say anything. So I wasn't going to hang out with my director for a couple more hours. Me driving the plow and him sitting next to me. Shooting the shit and tell me how to drive a plow. I'm sure I know how, but 7.30, 30 minutes out late. My Friday of tomorrow. Nah, I'm sorry. And I was already swiped out. But yeah, that's that was my day. Nothing too crazy, too major. So you guys might find this boring. But, uh, let's see. What else could I mention? Oh. Old Pipe Pops. If you're watching. And I hope you're recovering well. Recovering fast. As best as you can. I've been saying a prayer for you every morning on my way to work, Old Pipe Pops. So I'm sure my prayers and everybody else's prayers and the mojo going your way is going to help you get better much faster. Oh, and my Moretti, my custom Moretti uh, design has been submitted to Marco Biagini. It's going to cost me 320 big US dollars. But he likes the design. He can make it. I think he's already started on it. He just has to find a different stem for the design I want. Because I'm ordering a big pipe. All I'm going to say is that it's bigger than an inch. And smaller than 10 inches. So. Yeah. Who else can I mention? Oh. Smokey Joe Tennessee and. Sea stomach pipe. Pipe pipe. Mm. Those guys are my two new heroes and inspirations. Why? Because they make fantastic, amazing, beautiful pipes. And I'm very inspired to start making my own pipes. I know I can. Because my mom always says, I will one day take after my grandfather, her father. And if I go back to Poland one day to my grandfather's house, which he built with his own two hands, he has a shed full, not, not full, full of tools, woodworking tools. I mean, old school, old school woodworking tools. So, if I ever go back to Poland, I might carve out some old school pipes. You never know. I'm very, I've been very inspired by the piping community. My wife just loves how everybody's accepting me to the community.
she loves it when like you guys shout me out in your videos. She especially loved it when when Dagner Jr. Dress, <laughs> dressed up as Annie. And when <laughs> I'm gonna spe I'm still speechless about that video, it's so damn funny. But my wife loves the shout outs you guys give me and to find all the videos. Very nice, very cool. So, man, I don't know what else to say. It's raining, it's freezing out, but it's supposed to be good in the next couple of days. By the way, how is everybody? I think I asked this already in the beginning of the video, but if I didn't, how's the snow by you guys on the East Coast? Old Haas. No, you're from Long Island. Um, PA pipe guy. Man, I'm sorry if I forget names. I think I have uh, memory loss or something. Hmm. I don't know. We have some magic hat. Oh yeah. Wish I had a fireplace going, man. But not allowed to have it in these apartments. So. So, I'm gonna get going now. Finish my pipe. Edit and upload this video. So guys, comment away. Oh, and I'm at, um, at about 160 or so subscribers. So for my 200, con 200 subscriber contest, nice prize giveaway. I have one pipe already in the gift bag, some tobacco, and I plan on putting another pipe in the gift bag and more tobacco and maybe some, you know, knickknacks. I'm going to keep adding on even until the contest is finished, so. And so it's coming out of my own pocket, so. Because you guys have done so much, that I decided to reward you guys, because you're all so cool. So, yep. I don't know what else to say, so I'm actually going to get going now. So I'll see you all later.